All right, let's get it going with Math Party, people. So what we have going on here is we have a question about a percent decrease. So remember, before you begin any word problem, you want to ask yourself, what do you want? What do you have? What's the connection? Follow that three-step process. That way you can not really get distracted by any extra information or information that seems confusing at the time. So first things first, what is it that we want? So right over here. And again, what you want, again, is what's the question? So we're gonna go ahead and highlight the question here. And notice how I'm not highlighting from the beginning of the sentence. That's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm gonna go look for that question action word like who, what, when, where, why, how many, which of the following. You wanna look for those as well. That's exactly what it is, and here we go. What is the percent decrease in the weight of the plane? So there's your question. And here's the thing. Sometimes with the question of the, um, the question statement of the problem, It'll sometimes give you the math and sometimes it won't. It'll always give you what you're looking for. It'll always tell you what it is you're trying to find. And sometimes you get a little extra like you get here. Notice that this is a blatant math word. That is gonna be, what is the percent decrease? So right over here, booyah. Percent decrease, that's a math phrase right there. And so you have to ask yourself, well, do I know the formula or the method or the procedure? to do that thing, that, that clear math word, do I know how to do it? Because chances are you're gonna to have to use it. So to find percent decrease or percent change in general, really what you need to do is this. You need to go ahead, so again, to find the percent decrease, right over here, let's go ahead and write that nice and clean. So to find percent decrease, what percent decrease is gonna be defined as is basically the amount of the change divided by the original amount. That's gonna be in fraction form and then you're going to go ahead and multiply by 100 to make it a percent. So here we go. Percent decrease is basically the change divided by the original amount, just like that. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind as we go to the next step of solving the word problem. And that's going to be, well, what do we have? You know, what information are we really given to kind of walk through this for ourselves? So here we go. Number two. What do we have? So here we go. I'm going to go in blue here. I'm going to go through and highlight anything that um, is numerical, or, you know, a quantity, a number. But remember that every time you go through a word problem, it's not just about highlighting the number. It's also about highlighting what it means. Because remember, the numbers don't matter until you know what you're supposed to do with them. And you don't know what you're supposed to do with them until you know what they mean. So let's go and get into it here. We have an 8,000 pound plane. So right over there, I'm going to highlight that. 8,000 pound plane. So let's write that there. Okay, so an 8,000 pound plane loses 50 pounds of fuel per hour during operation. After a seven hour flight, we're looking for the percent decrease. So basically, we already know we're looking for percent decrease. So in the context of the problem, we just need to know, well, what's changed and what's the original amount? If I'm looking at the story as I read it, it looks like originally the plane was 8,000 pounds. It loses fuel after a certain amount of time. And so we're just looking to see, hey, what's the loss of fuel or the change in weight as a percent? That's it. So cool. We have an 8,000 pound plane. That's the original amount right here. So I'll just highlight there. And then up next, what I'm going to write here is loses 50 pounds of fuel per hour loses 50 pounds of fuel per hour right there okay per hour and then over here in the next sentence we're being we're being told that we're looking at a seven hour uh, period of time so let me go ahead and just change this color something else here let's go ahead and make it orange so here we have a seven hour flight for seven hours. All right, great. So we're sitting here and we're still wondering, okay, we're trying to find percent decrease and what I need is the change. Notice that you're told that it's losing 50 pounds of fuel for seven hours. So 50 pounds of fuel per hour for seven hours. Did they give you the change? No, but you can find it with this information. Because think about it. If you're losing 50 pounds of fuel per hour, that means, well, in one hour, that's 50. After two hours, it's 100, 50 plus 50. Three hours, 150. So to find the total amount that you lost, just multiply, right? Just multiply. So 50 pounds of fuel per hour 
for seven hours, that's gonna be 50 times seven, and that's gonna equal 350 pounds of fuel lost or dumped. So in that case, sweet, sounds good. We'll go ahead and highlight that. That right there is gonna be the change. So the connection is, well, we already had the formula actually, so we're good to go. Now let's just go ahead and plug the numbers in, do the work, and see what that is as a percentage. And really quick, before we continue my math part of people, I know you're enjoying this, and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly, in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons, you're gonna get access to guided practice just like this, worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online, and lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way, when you take the test, there's no test anxiety, there's no pressure, because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more, so take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program, and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. You gotta multiply by that 100%. Um, that way you can turn it into a percent, okay? So with that said, my math party people, here we go. Step three, here's our connection, we'll build it. The change that we have was 350 pounds. And then over here, we have an 8,000 pound plane. So if we just go ahead and divide that, we can go ahead and just write it like this. 8,000 going into 350. It's very likely we'll need to use some decimal places, so I'll go ahead and do it that way as well. And here we go. So, how many times does 8,000 go into three? It can't. 35, it can't. 350, it can't. And then from there, we have 3,500. 8,000 and 3,500, still a no, but into 35,000, yeah. That's gonna be four times. Because eight times four is 32, so 8,000 times four is 32,000. So with that, booyah, we're gonna have that four right here. Again, if I'm lining up the place value, so I'm gonna have that decimal place right there and have a zero. And then that'll be a four. So boom, we'll go ahead and subtract 32,000. So we'll go ahead and fix that up for ourselves right there, there, and there, just to line up the place value. And so we end up with 30, with, uh, excuse me, 3,000. Sweet. Then you'll go ahead and drop that zero. Now you have 30,000. How many times does 8,000 go into 30,000? Well, that sounds like that's gonna be a three. So with that said, boom, minus 24,000 right there. We're left with 6,000. And if you need to keep going, sure, go ahead. But notice that if you just go ahead and move that decimal place over to make it a percent, we have 4.3%. Now, if this number is five or above, that's gonna round up to 4.4, and that's right here. So you already know, you can tell if you've already had experience with percentages, you can already tell that that's gonna be the answer. Um, but if you keep going, you'll see that, you know, you'll see what I mean here. So I'll go ahead and just kind of take that off. I'll finish up. But what we see right over here is that's going to be another zero being dropped down. So you have 60,000, 8,000 going to 60,000 seven times. So when you think about that, yes, that's going to make it round up. So you'll have 0 0.043712. One, so that's 4.37%. But again, nearest tenth forces that to round up to 4.4. And that's why B is gonna be the answer in that case. So that is problem number one of the challenge set if that's where you found it. But um, again, you have to look at these problems as always doable. If you always start off with the question, you'll be able to understand, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And sometimes when the math is given to you, boom, you got a formula, a formula that you know you can stick to to get things done. So I'll see you in the next one. Let's keep basing this test. And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there, and you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you wanna raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe and raise your score.